It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. You know, you know who you know who should be held accountable in these situations? Who? Um the the platforms. YouTube, Instagram, I don't buy Twitter. That. Facebook. You don't want that. You don't want that. No, I'm gonna tell you why we want that. We did. We do want that because no, every don't. other platform has to get held accountable. If I get on Breakfast Club and I say something that's not true, guess who gets sued? Yes, but I 105, iHeart, everybody. Gawker. Gawker says something that's not true. Then guess who gets sued? Right. Gawker. Gawker prints something. New York Times prints something that's not true. Guess who gets sued? New York Times. So Facebook, mm-hmm. Twitter, Instagram, everybody else. They got to do a better job of filtering out the lies and the bullshit. That's not freedom of speech. You, you, you can have, by the way, you can have freedom of speech. You're just not free of the consequences of that speech. So if you got somebody on a platform yep. that's spreading some falsehoods about somebody, spreading some bullshit about somebody, yep. when you sue that person, name the platform in the lawsuit too. So the reason why I would give you pushback on that is because um, when you just named Breakfast Club, Breakfast Club is a business that is responsible for the entities that it hires. Um, Facebook is not putting out this information. People are using the outlet that Facebook is to put out the information. So suing Facebook would be the same as suing the radio waves. Like Deep dive. Listen. You see what I'm, I'm saying? Wh- no, I'm going to tell you why I don't but, see what but you're Let saying. me just explain the difference, right? It's like okay. it's a difference between – suing Verizon Fios for something that somebody said on MTV and suing MTV. MTV is using Verizon Fios, which is the platform, in order to share their content. MTV is responsible for their content, right? Verizon Fios is the one that displays the content. Now, don't get me wrong. You have a food and drug administration for food, right? You have certain laws that dictate the cable airwaves as well. Right. So it's like there are filters for the content and the food that we consume so that when we go into a grocery store, we know that apple, we know that pear, we know that turkey sandwich is going to be up to standard. We don't have that with the Internet just yet because anything we consume on the Internet could be bad for us or it could be good for us. We don't know. So it is you, tricky. But you see the think, difference, though? No. And I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. If these organizations um, are, are holding Facebook accountable for the hate that Facebook lets on its platforms, mm-hmm. then they should hold Facebook accountable for the lies these 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 social media sites have on its platforms. Like they they I think uh I, I want to say it's the ADL. The ADL asked advertisers to join the campaign to pause their spending on Facebook and Instagram until Facebook did a better job of removing all of this hate. That's on Facebook. All of these different um, white right wing conspiracy theorists, you know, who be saying shit on Facebook or so, you know, he, here's fuel, a, fueling racism and anti-Semitism yeah. on Facebook. If yep. they can be held responsible for that, they can be held responsible for the lies that they allow people to spew on Facebook in regards to other people. I understand what you're saying. I think that that's right. And I think in all sense, it's fair. Here's the other thing that you have to consider. These platforms like Instagram and Facebook are creating legislation and rules on what is hateful speech, not for one country where everybody agrees more or less what is considered hateful and what's not. They're doing Mm -hmm. it for the world, right? So, for example, in a country like the U.S., saying certain things about women and women's roles, we might deem sexist. Where you go to certain parts of the world, they might deem that as normal. They might deem that as completely regular and responsible. You saying something as simple as, I want my wife to be at home with the kids and cook dinner, that might be the expectation in certain parts of the world, where saying that in America, that might be looked at as misogyny and sexism. So, so you take the you take the video down in America and leave it up in Iraq. But who they do, do that shit all the time? Do you they? Know, like if what if you post it, you can post a video like last week, salute to my girl Pretty V. Pretty V did a video with uh uh damn, I can't remember a homie name right now. Uh, I can't remember the rapper's name, but she did a video that was Martin and Lawrence, right? Mm-hmm. And when I posted the video, immediately it said blocked and it said this video can't be viewed and it named like 10, 15 different countries. Because they didn't pay the rights for it. What you mean? 
they didn't like pay the rights to have their content viewed. Like that happens all the time where they haven't like paid the rights to oh, view yeah, yeah, their yeah, content. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm saying like, like take it down. Something. When you're in another country, like when you're in the Caribbean, it's certain things like, and I've told this story before. We was in Anguilla one year. I wanted to watch uh, Midnight, Moonlight. Yeah. And you couldn't watch it in that country. You couldn't watch no gay programming in that country. Because I went and I started, well, I, let me see, it broke back mountain showing. Nope. And so I just went down this rabbit hole of all of this gay programming on Netflix. All of it was blocked in that country. So that, that's an interesting deep dive right here. It's like, should we dictate the morality for the world? Should we go to the people in, uh, in uh, Anguilla and say, hey, listen, you're being homophobic by not showing gay programming. You need no. to show it. That's why so, I said take it down in America. Take so, the video down in America. But then who the fuck are we? Should we should allow blatant homophobia and like support blatant homophobia in other parts I don't, of the world? I don't, I, don't, I don't think none of these platforms should. And being that these platforms that are American owned. And by, by the way, being that these platforms are American owned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can dictate and regulate what they want. They shouldn't want no hate speech regardless of where it came from. And another example of that is on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Twitter has fact checking now, right? Right. So when somebody posts something that's not true. They immediately say, oh, well, the facts of this are X, Y, and Z, and they take down the tweet. It should be the same way when somebody makes uh, accusations against someone that's not true. But who decides what the facts are? Like, if you go to a country that is run by a religion, for example, the religion supersedes everything, right? Mm -hmm. Their facts are religious. So you might present some idea like, I don't know, the world is, you know, four billion years old, and they might go, no, nah, that's wrong. That's not real. Mm -hmm. The the world started when God started the world, you know, a few thousand years ago. So what who the decides what the, what the what, facts are? What if the facts are proven in a court of law? What if the facts say no? Nope, in wasn't their there. courts over there, they're dictated by religion, so they will give you pushback. I guess what I'm saying is it's hard to have one set of information that is going to be coherent for the whole can, world. Can OJ Simpson be called a murderer? No, on he's innocent. Media? Exactly. Right? I don't I don't know if he's well. He was found innocent in the court of law. Yeah, he's found innocent in the court of law. Yeah. So if somebody gets online right now and says, O.J. Simpson is a murderer, O.J. should be able to sue for defamation. And that tweet or whatever it is on social media should be labeled as this is not a fact. O.J. Simpson was found innocent in a court of law. What's the point of having the goddamn courts if you're not going to if you're not going to adhere by what the court says? I wonder That's if That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I wonder if you have the freedom of speech if, if under freedom of speech you can say that somebody was a murderer and you can say even if they're found innocent you can be like no I still feel like you're a murderer. I wonder if you're allowed to say that. At what it's point gotta be, It's got to be it's got to be legal. It's got to be some type of legal jargon for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Like it has to be something. I don't know if the word would be a like it can't be alleged, could it? Yo, I don't but know. That's another thing that's interesting. It's like if we start putting our American ideals and our American or Western values on the rest of the world via social media, how is that not another form of colonization? And we're doing it under the guise of, hey, this is the right thing to do. This is progressive. What the fuck you think colonists did back in the day? Hey, you not, savages, here's the right thing to do. This is the progressive way to be. It's the same colonization. I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not mad at it, but when we're talking about America, right? And we're talking about the Constitution, right? We're talking about freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is great. I want everybody to have free speech. But what do we always say? You're not free from the consequences of that speech. So if you say some shit just because you feel that way, or you say some shit because that's what you believe, great. But if it's not true, you got to be held accountable for that shit. That's what defamation is for. <laughs> that's what defamation lawsuits are for. That's what slanderous and lie. That's what libel is all about. Go ahead. Say whatever the fuck you want. But stand on that shit when the lawsuit comes. So should comedians be sued for the things they say? Yeah. I don't, I don't. What do you mean? Like, should a comic be sued for the things they say? Should The Onion, you know, the satirical news site, be sued for some of their headlines? What like is the, the headlines? I would have to see. You got to give me an example. It's specifically was, satirical. It's like lies are made in that baked into the headlines. And there are were there are like there are rules to protect. That's what I'm saying, Chris. You're the author. Tell us about satire. <laughs> like that's what how the rule, what that's how SNL satire? isn't sued well, every single week. Yeah, well, generally satire gives you a pass. Um, you know, there, there there was a famous situation in France. I think the name of the magazine was, was like. Uh, Charlie, Charlie, Hebdo. something, Charlie, yeah. Hebdo. and they, they, they satire, they did a uh, cartoon satire of the Prophet Muhammad. They got and shot uh, somebody ended up storming the office and pretty much killing a lot of the staff. So that's 
that's the most extreme version of but when see, that's stuff not, goes wrong. That's not law, though. I'm, I'm like, what's the what's the what's the rules of law <clears> when it comes to satire? That was just somebody being upset and being mad. Like, can somebody sue you over a satirical piece? Generally not. I don't know the specific laws, but generally, you know, we're talking the U.S., U.K., generally in a lot of countries, you get a pass if you can uh, prove that it's satire. I know in music, if you satirize a song, like that's how Weird Al was able to basically remake all those hits, right? Mm -hmm. That was satire. Right. It wasn't, if he had just remade Beat It, he would have gotten sued, but by making it Eat It, he was able to do it. Okay, I just Googled, uh, and it says freedom of speech, why satire is protected. And they have satire versus defamation, a legal explanation. And um, over the years, it says over the years, U.S. courts have made it abundantly clear parody and satire are not defamatory. And it says the United States Supreme Court does not allow for recovery for parody or satire under a libel or slander claim unless the alleged victim can prove actual malice in the publication. So there's your answer. And malice is very hard to prove. It's hard to tell me um, how I feel about somebody because yeah, I under the form of, under the form of satire, it's yeah, or even under the form yeah. of comedy. But that's the yeah, thing. But, I, that's why I don't want that. I want to be able to say things that are not true. But, I say things that are not true all the time as a comedian, exactly. But if you start chipping away at what people can or can't say on different social media platforms, which is how we consume content, it's like you're going to chip away at all the funny content that we see. All these memes are lies. All these gifts are lies. They're not yeah. true, and that's what makes them funny. So I don't want to remove our sense of humor from our culture. That's one of the most, that might be the most dominant force of cultural values that we have is our sense of humor. I think we're blurring two things though. I agree with you on that, but I also agree that a person shouldn't be, you know, accused of a crime (laughs) on on social media if they did not commit said crime. Agreed. And if if facts of the case show they did not commit said crime. And if you're going to run around and say that type of stuff, you should be held liable. Yep. Absolutely. I agree. I, I I think so. As far as far as comedy and satire and and jokes and stuff like that, totally different ball game. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. if you're actually out there accusing people of things, bro, just make sure you standing on that shit. And I'm and I'm talking about these people that go on these podcasts and say this shit, like like the women y'all were talking about, or the dude that was in Michael B. Jordan's closet. Because yeah. if any of those people decide, you know what? I want to sue this person for defamation. Mm. I want to sue this person for, 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 for slander. I want to sue this person for saying something about me that's, that's not true. They got, they got the right to do that. Yeah. No, I agree. I feel, I feel very strongly about both. I don't want people accused of things that they haven't done, especially when the accusation is enough to you know, convict you in the court of public opinion, as you often say. But I also want the ability to say whatever the fuck I want. So it's like this super fine line. How do we thread the needle? Do we thread it through satire? Do we thread it through intent? If your intent is to make a joke, can you say some fucked up shit about someone as long as it's you know through the lens of joking? That's I why want you to, yeah. I want you to be a member of the Chicago Balls. I want you to be a member of the Brooklyn Nuts. If you believe in freedom of speech, Say whatever the fuck you want, Mm -hmm. but don't try to duck the consequences. Right. I don't care if it's an ass cutting. I don't care if it's a lawsuit. I don't care if it's people storming your goddamn place of work. If you put something out there, stand on it. (laughs) That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Stand on your shit. Don't run from it. Don't try to say, hey, I should be able to say X, Y, and Z. Yes, America is full of freedom of speech, but you show me one time where people have been free of said consequences. And I think that's the problem with social media. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a problem with all of these platforms. They allow motherfuckers to feel like they can just go out there and say whatever. This guy, John Fuck, or whatever the hell his name is, John Fucky, Hornets radio broadcaster. You know why he got suspended for putting the jazz niggers game is awesome on his Twitter? Because he works for a fucking corporation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. he got something to lose. What happens oftentimes in these situations, motherfuckers with nothing to lose, just jump on and say anything. Ain't it sweet? Because any little gain is good for them. They don't give a fuck if his followers on social media. They don't give a fuck if his interviews, whatever it is. So all I'm telling people is when they jump out there and they say this type of shit, just make sure you got some fucking money for a lawyer or you know how to fight. 